Yes, it is so good to have you in the house this morning. I just want to say thank you. I know it's fall break. I know we have lots of people traveling. And uh, man, any any student in the house, when I say fall break, that should bring a smile. Come on, Miss I have a big smile on your face. I, I want to just give a shout out to Uprising, our young people. Uh, they have been amazing. And, and, and I say that because, you know, just four weeks ago, we started a push with our young people and we said, hey, this is what we're going to do and this is what we're believing God to do. And we want for the next four weeks, we will never be this small again. And, and we all kind of made a commitment. We prayed over it. And so every week, Uprising has grown. Every week, visitors have come and kids and Students, not kids, students, young people uh, are, 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 are getting impacted, giving their life to Christ. It, it's a great, great thing. And I want to encourage you to keep praying for our young people because there's, listen, I, I want to be incredibly loyal to the past, but I want to be ferociously loyal to the future. You know, there's something about that. And, 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 and on top of that, I kind of got some of my glory stolen. Uh, this morning, thank you. It's an honor to be here, to pastor, to be your pastor, to uh, facilitate ministry with Chantel and I. We, we count that not just an honor, but we count it as a privilege at Cornerstone, and we really, really greatly appreciate you. But you know what? There's no way we do what we do, look good like we look, without a team. Really, your team will always make you look better and... and uh, and, 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 and I just want to thank, listen, this whole month is Pastor Appreciation Month. And I want to make sure you know that we have a great pastoral team. You know, Jeremy and Katie, Jeremy's in the back, uh, helping me. I was, man, I was a jack of all trades. Don't even get, listen, if it was too loud, if you didn't like the drugs, we don't care because I was running sound today. And, and I, I, I have this tendency to turn it up. I know I do. So if, if I hurt you, I apologize. But I was in, I was like, hey, Mr. DJ. Uh, I was breaking it down back there. Uh, so it, it was good. But, but we have a great pastoral leadership team at Cornerstone with Jeremy and Katie Bush and Scott and Denise. And they're amazing. I want you to join me this morning in the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 3. If you have your Bible, you'll get there in time. Just tell me when you get there. But Ezra is, 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 is a story. It's actually one book that became two books. So... In, in the Hebrew canon, Ezra and Nehemiah are one book, but it was separated later when they translated the book of Nehemiah. They, they separated. It was one book created by two authors, but it's one story. It is, it is the rebuilding of the tabernacle, but it's also the rebuilding of Israel, and it's the re rebuilding of the Jerusalem wall. It, it, it's, it's a story that is astounding because it's a story of what we say just a couple of moments ago, will you do it again? Because God is in the business of doing it again and again and again and again. Israel is faced with a very difficult season of their life. The Babylonians overtook them, brought them captive. They, they burned the tabernacle to the ground. They killed the leadership of the city. And, and they began to run on an agenda that was not God's agenda. Now let me tell you something. It wasn't God's will that Israel found themselves here. It was Israel's will that got them there. Well, watch this. It was Israel's mistakes that got them there, but it is God's will to get them out of there. And so in the midst of trouble, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of the broken down, God begins to rebuild because that's who God is. God is a builder. If you don't understand that, God is a builder of lives. Ezra isn't just there 
as the priest and the scribe to rebuild the tabernacle. Ezra isn't just trying to build something physically. He's trying to build something spiritually. He's trying to rally a troop of people to go again, to believe again, to be challenged again. That once again, Israel would rise out of the ashes and into the beauty of what God had created them for and live in the purpose of their life, their God-given purpose. That they would begin to win again, that they would begin to strive again, that they would begin to take land again and conquer again and overcome again. But, but they're in a, a broken place, honestly. They, they live with a triumphant God, but they're not living in a triumphant way. And so Ezra is rebuilding the tabernacle. And you see that as, as, as the adversary comes into your life, there's two things that he'll try to do. He'll try to break down the leadership of your life, and he'll try to break down the temple, the worship of your life. Two things that happened in the life of Israel is that the tabernacle and leadership was erased. <laughs> Why? Because what happens when you miss... Listen, I'm not just talking about leaders in your life. I'm talking about the leadership of your life. When you become misguided in the leadership of your life, you will surrender to things that you shouldn't surrender to. You will find yourself in places that you shouldn't be, doing things that you shouldn't do. That is the surrenderance. That is beginning to allow something to, to move you greater than the conviction of your life. And so that's where Israel is. They're not led by their conviction. They're being led by their convenience. But as Ezra comes in and begins to speak to them, in verse 10... All the way through verse 13. I want to read it today. And I want you to read it with me. If you've got to read it on the screen, read it on the screen. If you've got your Bible, your phone, whatever it may be, it says this. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with the trumpets. And the Levites, the son of Asaph, the symbols, and to praise the Lord according to the ordinance of King of David, king of Israel, and they sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever towards Israel. Goes on to say that all the people shouted with a great shout. And when they praised the Lord because of the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Listen, listen, I want to pause there. You usually, I don't know if you've ever seen foundations. Uh, we have built several homes, Chantel and I. I've never seen the foundation. Now, I, woo, I can't wait for it. Man, look at that cement. It's beautiful. <laughs> they begin to rejoice about the foundations. It goes on and says, but many of the priests, excuse me, then all the people shouted with great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and the Levites and heads of fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of the temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy for the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. Lord, I pray today that you would operate out of Scripture and impact people. Lord, that your word would go as, as, as a strength, as a faith that your word says it is. That it would not only impact, but it would direct our paths today. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Ezra is in a key moment. Listen, foundations aren't anything really to, to shout about. Unless you're excited about what the foundation represents. Because you'll never build anything greater than what you lay the foundation to be. You're not going to build a 5,000 square foot home on a 3,000 square foot foundation. And it always, it always makes me smile in my own life and when I see the life of others that they give God a small piece and expect Him to do great things with their life. We, we give them a 
small foundation, a small piece of our life, expecting Him to change everything in our life. Listen, what you give God is He'll use to the greatness of your life. He'll use for the greatness of His glory. But you've got to increase the foundation of your life. You've got to allow the foundation to grow. Then you've got to allow the foundation to stretch. You know, there's all kinds of different foundations. I was reading about what the difference is between cement and concrete. I said, well, it's the same thing. It's not. Cement is the glue that creates concrete. Cement is the ingredient they put in concrete that makes it all stick together. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit in our life is the cement to your foundation. It is the concrete of God. Jesus Christ is the rock, but the Holy Spirit is the cement. It glues you together, gets you set, it gets you right, it gets you in a, in a place of strength. See, you cannot, you, you, you better know what your foundation is. Because when they lay a foundation, a foundation, when they lay concrete for a foundation, it has to have a certain strength to it. You can't just go down to Home Depot, grab you a couple bags of concrete mortar, mix it together and say, oh, I'm going to put a slab down. Because you do it, it's not going to have the PSI, it's not going to have the pressure, it's not going to be tested enough to hold the stability of what you want to build on it. So whatever you want to build on it, it's got to be able to withstand the pressure. Not only what you're going to build, but the storms that it's going to face. Not only what you put on the foundation, but what, is, what, what, what comes to the foundation. So the foundation is so critical. The foundation of your life is so critical. It is so powerful. But we don't like it because it's just foundation. I mean, I don't know if you've ever built a house, but you know when they build the house, they dig your 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 your, your footers and they start digging, they start running rebar, and you're just like, can we just build the house? I want to see sticks and I want to see granite. I want to see travertine. I, I, I want to see showers and, and carpet. And I want to start seeing the paint on the wall. Now that's exciting. But all that stuff means nothing if you haven't laid up strong right. foundation. Right. Right. We're in a series called Go. Say go. go. It's a go season. We believe it's a go season. But sometimes you've got to stop before you can go. Sometimes God stops your go. He puts a no to the go so he can put a yes to your future. Can I tell you when you know that your foundation is weaker than it should be? Is instead of standing in foundation, instead of fighting, you, you take flight. That is a key that is a key thing that shows us in our own life. Whatever you're running from, whatever you take flight from, means there's a weakness in the foundation of your life, that your foundation is cracked. For some of us, foundation got cracked when we were kids. For others of us, foundations got cracked at a church that hurt us. A leader that didn't do what we thought because we, we didn't have our eyes on Christ, we have our eyes on people. Can I just tell you, if I haven't disappointed you yet, give me some time. No, give me some time. I'll disappoint you. Because you know what? We are so worried about humanity. God never asked us to fall in love with humanity like he asked us to fall in love with God. God, God says that you better fall in love with humanity so you have the grace to deal with humanity. But God's grace for humanity allowed him to love humanity. It's a powerful thing. And, and so God wants to make sure the foundation... I'm here to tell you that God is laying foundation. And it is the storms that, 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 that test the foundation of your life. It will be the storm that will test the foundation of your marriage. But if you're a person of flight, you always take off before God can build it. You'll be on the run. As soon as it gets a little weird, pure, I'm gone. As soon as chaos happens at a church, you'll run. As soon as chaos happens in a relationship, you'll run. Why? Because the foundation of your life somewhere has gotten fractured. And when fractures happen in foundations, walls and planes 
things that should be straight. It says that we're connected to the chief cornerstone, Christ, who sets the, the plumb line and sets the foundation so that we stay, so that we stay level. An unleveled life. A life that is always seeing turmoil and the same turmoil. And you keep going around the same mountain means that God is up to something in your life to fix the foundational piece so that He can graduate you to the next level of your life. But we don't like foundation. You know why? Because foundation is ugly. But listen, listen, I, I was listening to a guy, and he was the public speaker. He was talking about, you know, when you're dressing, you need, you got to have some foundation. And, and, and I don't know if you've ever heard of... Um, Oh my gosh, I just faced it. I, I have it in my notes, though. It, it, I, I, let, let me help you. I need to find out what it is so when I go to get one, I can get one. Oh, they're called spanks. <laughs> no, these things are amazing. Listen, you can eat. You can be a little jello-y. And what I'm saying, you just put this thing on. It actually has like... Like, to, like, cut you. Like, it, it makes you look like you're different. It gives you a foundation. Like, man, he looks great. Yeah, but he can't breathe. <laughs> yeah, she looks great in that dress. But yeah, she's about to pass out. Listen, foundations are critical. Because... You ever seen someone that didn't have the right foundation under the right outfit? It's alarming. No, I'm not just being facetious. Have fun a little with smile. You know why? Because because sometimes we're trying to squeeze into things that we're not ready to squeeze into. We want what we want, but we don't want to do what we're supposed to do. We, we want to live the way we want to live because we deserve it or we it, it makes us feel better. But, but, but we haven't matured enough to, to, to develop the integrity, the character to live in the manner in which God has called us to live. Because the foundation of our life is eroded, it's, it's unbalanced, it doesn't have the right pressure, the right PSI, the right strength to stabilize. And what happens is, good times will never tell you about your foundation. Just ask Florida. Right now, Florida isn't being tested, listen, it's not just buildings that are being tested in the foundation, it's families that are being tested in the foundation. I, I know it's a natural disaster, but people are being tested of who they are and what they'll do when the pressure's on their life. Come on, we're in the craziest election we've ever seen in our life. You don't even, I can't even go there. But many times the issue is that we have created a, a smaller place for God that he's asking for. God isn't asking for a piece of your life. He's asking for, for all of your life. For the things that he wants to do within your life. Because storms come to try the foundation of your life. They come. And, and they're going to test you. Every year in monsoon season... You know, this year has been an amazing season in, in Tucson. I don't know if you've enjoyed it. I have immensely enjoyed it. Because we've had tons of rain, but it, we haven't had tons of wind as much. You know what I'm usually used to is driving by the planters and parking lots and trees are falling over. Why? Because the wind came, but there wasn't a foundation in the tree. That's what happens in lives. That's what happened to Israel. The reason why when they laid the foundation for the tabernacle, they began to shout and get excited is because the last one didn't hold in their life. And God was making it again. What I put my hope in, let me down. What I put my hope in, died. And it has frozen me. It is. It is. It has stood me still, but God is doing something again, and 
it's unique because you have two groups of people in Ezra chapter 3. You have one people that are, whoa, come on, this is the best thing ever. And you have another generation that is weeping, not because they're not excited. This is where we miss scripture. It's not that they're not excited about the new tabernacle. They're still broken over the old one. And when you're broken over your past, it is really hard to get into your future. When you're broken over what was and what has been, it is hard to cheer about what could be. There's a guilt. Well, I don't deserve that because of where I've been. I don't deserve that because of what I'm doing. I don't deserve that because of what has happened. But God says, no, I'm doing a new thing. I'm laying a new foundation for you to build on. It's not the old foundation. It's a new foundation. It's, it's, it's not an old wineskin. It's a new wineskin. And I want to pour my, 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 my anointing. I want to pour my, my, my pleasure. I want to pour my presence into your life. And let me tell you something. The greatest way to see what is founded in your life is what you'll stand for and not what you'll run for. Whatever you'll stand for is founded. Whatever you run from is fractured. The problem is, is when you get fractured, you'll run from the founded. You will. You'll run from the founded because you have created an appetite for the fracture. Oh, that's not true. Well, I see it every day. I see it in my life. I see it in your life. I see it in our country's life. We, we, we go from one fracture to the next fracture, one relationship to the next relationship, one church to the next church, because we're looking for something to change. Something isn't going to change. God isn't trying to change something. He's trying to change me. Yes. Oh, if I can get that person out of my life, my life, woo! If you get that person, God will bring the same person with a different name on Because <laughs> you need that person in your life. No, they're from the devil. They just might be from God. They're going to cause you to pray more, be humble more, search more, seek more. It's going to stretch your foundation. You know, in Arizona, we have a post foundations. I don't know if you know that what that is, but it's it's actually cables that run through the cement, and, and they put a tension on it that holds our foundations. You know, before they even lay the foundation, they'll, they'll percolate the ground. What it means is, does the water seep in? Is it is it soft enough to absorb what needs to be absorbed? Or is it just going to keep flooding, which is going to erode your ground and, and put seep holes on your, on your foundation? That's what happens when you become bitter, when you become negative, when you become a struggle. It doesn't seep in anymore. It just runs off. Or pulls up. So your life continues to flood with chaos. God wants to build a foundation. In Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 27. Worship team, why don't you come? Uh, I, let's just read 24 and 25. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these things, Jesus is speaking. He said, Whoever hears the things of mine, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. And it did not, and it did not, and it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. In Ephesians 2, 19, it says this, now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. What is, what is the Lord saying in Matthew and in the book of Ephesians? He's saying this. I make broken foundations whole again. I, I make 
foundations that once once were something you could build upon, but life somehow had broken it down. I build it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. He looks at Ezra, the scribe and the priest, and God says to Ezra, Ezra, will you lead the way? Because I want to do it again. That's why when people that were in captivity, people that were in struggle, people that heard the greatness of God but didn't know if they had seen the greatness of God in a while in their life, when the foundation was built for the tabernacle, they began to get excited. Oh, they began to get excited. Why? Because they saw a place where God could start again. Again. So sometimes in your go, God brings a stop, a rest stop in your life, a pit stop in your life. And He wants to check the tires and and the gas and make sure you're ready for the next season. He wants to check your foundation because it's not a matter if you're going to have a storm in your life. Oh, you're going to have a storm. It's not if, it's when. But when you built on the rock, Jesus Christ, it's a foundation that stands the storm. You can you can stand on that foundation. God said, I, I pulled you out of the mud and the mire and I've set your feet upon a rock. The struggle for us is when we step off the rock. It's when we flee instead of stand. When you've done everything you can, stand. Then stand firm. Stand. Stand in your convictions. Stand in your healing. Stand in the greatness of your God. Let Him build a foundation of character, a foundation of purpose, a foundation. He's not putting a foundation in your life just to make you great. He's putting a foundation in your life so that you understand that He is great and that He is willing he is able and He is wanting to walk through the seasons of life with you. To keep you on a go, sometimes you got to pause. Just pause. So that God can do a work on the foundation of your life. Will you stand with me this morning? Lord, I love you today. Thank you this morning. We're going to sing that song that we ended with. Because it is my belief that in this room, God wants to do it again. That God wants to work in your life again. That the healings that God brought yesterday weren't just for that day. It was so that you would remember and believe Him again today. You believe it for your kids. You believe it for your life. You believe it for your future. God, today we're calling out, Lord, that you would rebuild the foundations of our life. Because you're a God that does it again and again and again.